mediating chatbots? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking AI, startups, and the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're... <laughs> If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button, hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop it out on Apple Podcasts. I'd greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, there was a study done the other day where they actually created 500 chatbots and they threw them onto a social media network and they had the chatbots mediate issues between arguing humans. And they came out and said, well, maybe we can use this tactic to allow humans to work together better. Because everybody knows when you throw a bunch of humans in a place, especially a place where you can be anonymous like social media, bam, 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 you can get all sorts of, you may get, you may get a more truthful uh, communication than if the people were in person, but you could get tons of vitriol. So to try and reduce the amount of vitriol that's <laughs> on social media. And if you ask me, I mean, the way to deal with vitriol on social media is to, is to completely ignore it because there's some people who really enjoy creating all that vitriol for effect, right? They're just trying to create it for effect. They're trying to create shock and awe. And if you just don't let the shock and awe bother you, that's the way to deal with that sort of thing. So what they did is they p created these fake chatbots and they created fake people who would join the conversation and they would try and mediate <laughs> whether it was left, right, black, white, whatever the conversation was. They tried to get these chatbots to sort of sit in between and mediate between these, these two humans, but not tell it, not tell the humans that it was a chatbot, but try and have them as the voice of reason or whatever that would come in there and attempt to soothe this conversation and, and take the heat out of it, right? And what do they call it? Reduce the toxicity on social media. <laughs> I think it's only toxic if you, if you think it's toxic, if you let it bother you. I mean, if you take the stoic way, if you take the atharexia way, basically you just say to yourself, you know, these are all external things that have nothing to do with me. The only thing I can do is decide how I am going to feel about what someone says to me. I can't stop them from saying something to me. But if I decide to ignore it, or if I decide to th say it has no power to hurt me, then I'm the one who has control over that. And we all need to build some of that stoicism into ourselves when we're talking about the toxicity of social media. So I thought that was an interesting use. It's like, why not throw some chatbots in there to try to mediate between humans? What, if it works, then why not? But on the other hand, I kind of am a little leery of these chatbots that are acting like humans, but they're not actually human. And I, wouldn't, I wasn't in a conversation with them, so I can't tell you whether or not they actually seemed human-like. But if you ask me, I would love to see some kind of labeling which says, hey, this is a bot. Calm down, folks. Maybe people would stop listening. Maybe we do need bots to mimic humans and to mediate between humans to reduce the toxicity of things until we've all figured out that this stuff shouldn't bother us. It just shouldn't bother us. We are the ones who are in control of how we feel about the communications that's coming at us. And we have to make that decision to now allow it to bother us. But until then, maybe AI chatbots mediating conversations between human beings is a good idea. That's it for me for today. See you next time, and until then, don't forget to think future.